Welcome friends, we are back again and today I'm bringing you some of Roland's most mysterious gear. Of course I'm talking about the Roland Studio System PJ890, Roland's only quarter inch patch bay. A true mystery. Let's go ahead and dive deep in it guys, let's go. A patch bay. Who cares, right? Hold on now. This ain't no run of the mill, middle of the mall patch bay. Being a vintage Roland connoisseur and all my days of scouring the internet in various countries, I have never seen this patch bay. I couldn't find not one shred of info on it. In fact, the only thing that ever popped up was the auction that I won, nothing else. My curiosity was getting the best of me, so of course I asked some fellow Roland lovers if they had ever heard of it. First I spoke with Vantage who said he'd only seen it go up for auction twice. Once was from an auction site, another from a Vietnamese Facebook market. Then I spoke with Alex Ball. It turns out we were both bidding against each other for this rare patch bay. And just like myself, Alex had never heard anything on the unit either but was curious and intrigued like a true Roland junkie. I then hit up Binge from Meme Toon Studios, who is a true scientist of sound. I explained to Binge that I have one of the most rarest pieces of Roland gear he's probably ever seen, the PJ890 Patch Bay. Thinking I was cool and unique for having one, Binge quickly shut that down simply by sending this pic. Turns out, he's got one as well. He got it off eBay many years ago for 60 pounds. He showed me how he's using it in his 90s rig and didn't know much about the origin either, but figured it was part of the first rack series. Alex Ball seeing multiple jack inputs on the front of the Roland PJ890, then suggested maybe the System 700 since it has multiple inputs. They both suggested maybe it has ties with the first rack series or the System 700. But we all figured there would be some sort of catalog information or more of a mention somewhere on Roland's timeline, but we could not locate it. So I scoured through pictures of Roland System 700 synthesizers on the internet to see maybe if I could possibly spot the patch bay. I looked on matrixsynth.com and I found a picture of what appears to be two stacked on top of each other. But you can't really tell since the picture only shows a third of the unit. Vantage told me he found an article from 1985 that referenced the PJ890. In this article from Home and Studio Recording, Richard Niles calls the PJ890 an instrument in itself. He uses it to patch numerous boss effects, but other than that, the PJ890 has no documentation anywhere. Not being able to handle the lack of info, I decided I just need to open up the unit and see what's inside. This of course only led to more questions than answers, because there wasn't one identifiable marking inside of it. So no numbers, no letters, nothing. I wish I could tell you more about its past, but I'm really not sure. And how many were made? Why didn't they ever make these ever again? Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into the complexities of this patch bay and let me explain why its patch routing really makes it a unique patch bay. Okay, as you can see, the front inputs are all quarter inch jacks. But then oddly, all the outputs and inputs on the back of the patch bay are RCA inputs. This is kind of odd, which made me think it went to some multi-track, uh, reel-to-reel tape recording type setup, but I have no idea. Let's talk about the front. The first two top left inputs, 1 and 2, are shared with inputs B, 1 and 2, making it four inputs and two outputs on the back. I'm not sure why they went with this, but so yes, you're understanding me right. And they're all shared. So four inputs, two out. You can see the drawing on the front representing this. All the inputs in the first two rows are like this, all the way down from A all the way down to F. Now the next 10 inputs, three through 12, are two inputs on the front and only one output in the back for each row. No input on the back of these rows either. So like, you know, you can go in, let's say channel seven, and there's, there's one output going on the back channel seven, okay? And for instance, I'm running it in the SMX 880. That's how I'm doing it. But also it sends the signal down to something else as well. It shoots the signal out. That's how it is on three through 12. Now the last eight inputs, 13 through 20, they work just like a normal patch bay. It's got the input on the top going in 
and then that goes out on the top row in the back and then there's input on the back that can go back in and you can shoot it on the bottom row um you know just like a normal patch bay and if you guys don't understand how patch bays work go watch numerous youtube videos on patch bays but this is just like a pretty much a normal uh you know 48 point balance patch bay or something like that when all said and done and we count up the number of holes on the front of this thing we're talking 120 holes let's be real hey that's more holes than a than an orgy in a swiss cheese factory okay i'm just saying you should be able to patch every piece of gear in your studio without any problem no problems effects synthesizer patching just even splitting lines dude it's uh, you can use this thing to split lines you know send two uh signals into one one signal into two if you wanted to there's endless possibilities really so it, it, it's a dope patch bay dude and it was so unique roland really outdid themselves with this one they really did. They couldn't top it. They said, you know what? We're never going to make a patch bay again. This shit was so dope. We're never making a patch bay again. And uh, we're not going to advertise this or have any record of this either. Like, I almost wonder if this was some weird prototype. Like, maybe like 10 of them were made or something. I don't know. But anyway. You know, I wouldn't be the keyboard kingpin if I didn't make a beat with this thing. So, of course, I ran various things through this and all connected through Rolanda. For the drums on this beat, I went ahead and used the Roland CR8000. For the sub bass, I used the classic Roland SH101. And for the uh, pads and the strings and all that, I know, let's talk some shit, guys. I, I went digital on that and I used the Roland JV80. And if you guys are sleeping on the JV80, I feel bad for you because that series really does have some premium, awesome sounding pads and just, you know, kind of mysterious, eerie sounds that I really dig. Go ahead, kick back, and uh, let's listen to the beat. Almost going on 50 years with much research and teams of investigators, the mystery of the Roland PJ-890 remains exactly that. This rare patch bay forged from Japanese steel by some of the most pristine audio engineers has an unknown origin story. Fingers point to the Roland System 700 modular synthesizer, yet they also point to the first Roland Rack series. With no internet record, no serial numbers, no print ads or brochures, 
One might think, was it all a hoax? A limited manufacturer run for a distributor showroom? Possibly a Japanese only release? Who knows? Just remember this, for every mystery there's someone somewhere that knows the truth. Perhaps it's you. Like and subscribe until we see you again. It's the Keyboard Kingpin. Peace.